Welcome to part two of my redstone clock tutorial, where I'll be showing you how to chain multiple of these digits together. First of all, some more optimizing changes to make the transition from digit to digit look a bit better. You want to set this repeater to two ticks like so, and this repeater down here to two ticks like so, so that this segment here and this segment here look smoother. Next, before we add a new digit to this side, we'll need to set up the digit carrying circuit. So, for example, if this says 0, 9, we'll want it to display 1, 0 when you count up, meaning that when this goes from 9 to 0, we want to send a signal to the next digit. So, to do that, we're going to come here, knock out this circuit, and replace it with a gray wool circuit, like so. We'll be taking an observer output from this uh, redstone dust here. You'll notice that currently this is at 9. When I flick it to 0, there should be two pulses coming from that observer. There it is. And we'll be using those two pulses to send one signal to the next digit. So to do that, place redstone dust here. We're able to cut it off, this in here, and then we want to replace these blocks here with slabs so they don't QC the piston. And also knock out this redstone torch as it's not needed, as you can see up here, so that it won't power the piston here. Next, add an observer here, and just a line extending all the way to here. Uh, another gray wool setting to here and again block out this part of the circuit and now we want to add a piston here now we also need to make sure to replace this block and this block with slabs so again quasi connectivity doesn't happen and to power this piston we'll use qc from uh, this block here Add a note block here, and now you will see that if we go from 9 to 0, there will be one pulse sent to this piston here, which will activate this observer when we build it in on the other side here. Next, we have to remember that we have a timer circuit that counts downwards as well. So when we have 1, 0, and we count down, we want it to go back to 0, 9, which means that when this digit goes from a 0 down to a 9, we want to send a signal to the next digit to go downwards as well. So to do that, we're going to take an output from this comparator, since that's how it checks to when to go from 0 to 9. This comparator is going to send a signal through this block down to here, where we will place another gray wool, like so. This will power a note block going into a observer, into a block, note block, observer, and an observer like so. Now we can begin building the orange logic circuit for the next digit. Uh, this is pretty much exactly the same as the last tutorial, just with a few modifications at the end. So you can go ahead and watch that one for a more detailed explanation of what's going on. Uh, I'll just build this in silence here so that you can watch and maybe uh, follow along, pause a bit and such. Again, make sure that these are stackable items.
Here you can just use Control middle click to copy this B-roll with all of its contents over here, like so. And now we should have a complete counting down and up system already. So when we press this button, yep, this will go down. As you can see, the signal went from uh, 0 to 3 here. Uh, the digit carrying should also work, so when I go from 0 down to 9, this should also decrease by 1. As you can see, it went from 3 to 4. Uh, yeah, it increased by 1 actually, because it decreases this signal, which is what the digit is supposed to be, by 1. And uh, when we go from 9 up to 0, the, this signal strength should increase by 1. There it is. Alright, let's continue building our logic circuit. sure to keep this dropper at 64 at all times. And here, instead of going out by 9 blocks, you want to go out actually only by 5 blocks. Because this is our second hand, and it, the digit range of the seconds only goes from 0 to 59. So in the tens place, we only want digits 0 to 5, hence 6 numbers. So 1, Two, three, four, five, six, just like that. Alright, now for our digit reset circuit. So, as you recall, we want it to reset from 5 to 0 if you count up this digit, because obviously we only have uh, 6 digits available, so we want to reset it from 5 to 0. So that's what we'll be building now. Make sure this is on subtract mode. Insert exactly nine stacks of items into this barrel. And uh, if you're wondering how I'm clipping through blocks, uh, I'm using the Carpet Creative No Clip feature from the Carpet mod. Uh, you can place a block on top of this node block as well, since we don't want it to make sound. And there we go. Now it should, when we count from 0 up to 6, reset itself right away. So it currently it's at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and right back to 0. Awesome. Now we can build the circuit that resets it from 0 back up to 5 if we count downwards. So to do that, let's go like this. Barrel here with, again, exactly nine stacks of items. As you can see, uh, it re uh, powered it up to five, even though there's uh, no, no signal coming from it right now since the circuit is blocked now. Now just cross-referencing from the other digit here. Yep, 
There we go. So now, when we reset it back to zero... Oops. When we press the button again, it should go back up to five. Awesome! It's time to build the seven segment display and the part behind it now. Uh, again, I'll be speeding through this part because it's covered pretty well in the previous video, so just follow along if you'd like. Again, I'll be using Light Matica as a guide here. And now, when I reset this back to zero, uh, everything should light up. It's not going down. What's happening? Ah, there we go. Awesome. To make our lives easier, we can just install the counting up circuit now instead of later. There we go. Uh, now the position is at uh, digit two, but when we go back, it should go to uh, our unencoded digit here. We go up, and it works. Awesome. 
Uh, we can also apply our tweaks from uh, the other uh, digit here to make the transitions look a bit smoother. So just one tick of delay here, break this, add two ticks here as in this side. Yep. Four ticks of delay on this one. And finally, one tick of delay on this one. Now we can again begin uh, encoding these digits here to actually display the, digit, the digits from 0 to 5. So to do that, we can go back here and start expanding this cyan patch. Uh, make sure to replace this with a slab. There we go. And now we can start expanding this. Yeah, let's go one line at a time to make it faster. Make sure to cut off the connections, obviously. Something wrong with this? Ah. Just forgot one of these lines here. There we go. Oh, did I forget another line? Oh my god. Oh, of course, the torch is here. Yeah. Make sure this looks like a cross section of this side but just a bit shorter. We'll add the digit carrying later. Now we can begin encoding these digits. So currently our torch is at the position of two. Let's decrease that to zero. Let's see. Yep, it's at zero now. And for zero, we want the middle one to not be turned on. So the middle one's controlled by this dust controlled by this line here, I believe. Yes, so if we just, hmm, right, replace this with a repeater here, like so. There we go. Now for one, we want to turn this one off. Uh, this one off this one off, the middle two off as well, so let's see, this one, and finally, where's the bottom one? Where are you? Ah oh, yes, the left one, the left one. Turn this one off as well. There we go, that's one. Now we go for a two, so this one should be turned off. It's basically just copying digits 1 to 5 from this side as well, but I'm just doing it again to clarify it for you guys. Alright, this is the side one, so 2 is this position. There we go. I want to disable 3, so that's uh, that one and that one. Oops. Being too quick here. There we go, that's 3. Four, we went to, let's see, disable the top line, I believe. Nope, that's not it. Is it, um, who controls the top? Ah, oh, yes, this line. So that one, and then these two on the sides here. So we want this one disabled. And the one at the bottom as well, which is controlled by the one all the way on the back edge here. There we go. And finally, for digit 5, we want that one to be turned off. So that one's controlled by the one at the top. No need for a torch there. And the one on the side here is controlled here, so don't need the dust there. There we go. 50. Uh, then obviously apply the 
uh, apply the modifications, the optimizations to make the circuit a bit, just a bit faster. Since these are all repeaters, we don't need these anyways. Um, want to look for places where there's two repeaters in a row that you can use. But uh, looks like this is it for now. Yep. And now, if we turn this clock circuit on, you should see it count up in seconds. Amazing. Look at that. Went from five to zero. So cool. And obviously counting down should work as well. So we go down like that. Should go from a 10 to a 9 in the next press. Nice. Look at that. Your own uh, double digit 7 segment display right here. Next, you're going to want to clone this entire structure over by two blocks. So if you're in survival mode, you can build out uh, four blocks like so, and just follow my tutorial from part one again and build the new uh, double, double digit segment here from scratch. If you're in creative, however, you can clone this structure using structure blocks, and I'll show you guys how to do that. So you want to go to the corner of your build on the bottom and uh, place the structure block such that uh, the, the corner encompasses the entirety of your build. And uh, you'll see what I mean in a second by this, but open the structure block, set it to save mode, and just give it uh, some any name you want. Like I'll, I'll call mine uh, segment one, press done. And you want to go to the other corner of the build and place another block such that it encompasses the entire structure. I think that would be here. And set this one to corner mode um, and just give it the same name. Press done. Go back to the first structure block and click detect. And it should uh, make a structure encompassing your entire build. You can adjust the positions of the structure blocks if necessary, but as you can see, this barrel on the side, on the back here, everything is covered, on the top, on the front, these buttons. And once you've made sure you've done that, you can go ahead and press save. Next, you'll want to go to, uh, right next to this structure and place another structure block down just right next to this, like so. And then uh, you want to type in that structure name and press load. And the structure should be right next to the one that you just saved. Now, it might be in a completely different position because structures save on, always on the southwest corner. So if that happens, uh, you can use any one of these rotation options or mirror options. Uh, yeah, just experiment and find one that works well. And then you'll want to press load. Now, when you load the structure, it'll start going crazy because when Minecraft loads structure, every single observer gets updated, which means that these dispensers will start uh, you know, screwing up. So what you want to do is you want to go into each dispenser that has a comparator coming out of it and just fill it all the way up with redstone like that. Take the other redstone out, do the same with the other four, the other three I mean. Oh right, I want to do this one first actually.
Okay. Yeah, just make sure that the uh, dispensers with the uh, sorry, the droppers with the comparators coming out of them have uh, full redstone dust, and the other dropper is empty on both sides here. And there you go. Also, for some reason, when you copy the structure over, uh, the repeaters on top of these dis uh, on top of these droppers here will have disappeared. So you'll need to go ahead and replace them. Here are two ticks there. And another repeater at two ticks over here. By the way, if you loaded it in an incorrect location like I did, you can use the bounding box of the structure to help you uh, remove this using the fill command. So just come over to one corner, uh, type slash fill, and then just use tab three times. Copy the command, go to the other corner uh, up here, build out just to the corner here. Uh, paste the command and then press tab three more times and then just type uh, air. That'll fill the entire region with air and you'll be able to reset your structure to fill it again from a different location. After you're done, the uh, circuit should look something like this. And now we're just going to complete the uh, digit carrying circuit in the middle. So come around the back here, locate the last pink wool of this segment and just create a gray whole line coming out from it like this. You want to actually destroy this redstone dust and replace it with a wool block. Destroy this observer and replace the bottom here with another wool block and put a repeater going into that block. And now just uh, place redstone dust along that line and put a repeater there, taking a signal from that pink wool. Place a few blocks to cut off the lines, and that'll be it for the uh, the going up conversions. So if we go from 9 or 5 to 0, this should increase as well. Nice. And now for the uh, going down, carrying. So as usual, we're going to go back here. Place a gray wool right here next to the target block. Redstone dust. A, where is it? Note block, put that right there. Observer going from it into a block. Uh, gray wool line snaking over here. And shred some dust. And make sure to cut off this as well. Uh, just going down and into a repeater like that. So if, if we go from zero now, uh, down to 5. This should go back to 9. Alright. And we can just fill in this black box here to complete the look of the panel. Replace these with the, uh, I don't even know what you call this, the, the colon next to the uh, digits. Yeah. And just light them up with uh, levers like so. Now you're going to want to do the exact same thing we just did, copying another segment over here. Yeah, so just do the same thing with the structure blocks, or if you're in survival, do the block by block thing. And after you're done, you should have another two digit segments over here uh, with the uh, digit carrying uh, circuits and everything in between. After you're done with that, the clock should look something like this. Well, exactly like this, actually, um, with all six digits ready to go. So if I uh, decrease this by one, the whole thing should go down. Nice. And before we finish the clock, there's two more steps that we should do. And the first one is completing the reset line back here. So. You want to uh, you see the, you see these groups of three orange wool blocks. You want to place a repeater leading into them uh, on every last orange wool block. It's like there, and then just keep going over here like that, like that. 
break the buttons. Go here. And there. And to make sure the redstone signal doesn't run out, you can just place a repeater. Doesn't really matter where you place these, just as long as they go all the way to the end like that. And now, when we press this button, the entire clock should reset back to all zeros. That looks really nice. Finally, as you recall, our timer and stopwatch actually goes up to 99 hours, and currently, in this segment of the of the digit, in this digit segment, we only have numbers going up to 5. So we need to increase this to go all the way up to 9 once again. So basically what we need to do is copy this design over to here. And yeah, I'll just uh, do this really quickly to show the process here. So first of all, we want to match the amount of redstone dust in these uh, in these barrels. So this one should have the same one as this one. Go like that. And also the barrel that is, uh, where are you? Right here should have the same one as the barrel here. So just like that. And now we're just going to extend this these uh, pink and cyan circuits all the way to the end. These three blocks should be repeaters. They were probably A or near schematic, but they should be replaced with repeaters instead here. The block at the end of this line should be a slab. And we can just copy the uh, top design here. So it's three torches here. And the rest of the torches are down here. And we can start encoding the rest of the digits now. So it's currently at three. Increase until it goes to six. So five, six. Six is done. Seven should have all of these finished, so place that one, place that one. That's not a seven, that's a three. Okay. That means that it should be this one and the bottom one. Where is the bottom one controlled by? I asked this line. That's a proper seven. Eight looks fine. And finally, we have nine. And nine should have the last the redstone dust destroyed. There we go. Now this digit should go all the way up to 99. And we can come back here and just apply those optimizations from the first tutorial right there. All right, thanks for watching part two. And part three, we'll be starting the uh, button selection panel and the circuit that controls the real life clock.